I, always, I was always a good student, always got good grades, always had a good head on my shoulders, always had abilities outside of just playing ball. And even somebody like me fell victim. And that's kind of really what hit me because I'm like, man, I graduated college and here I was, you know, I had these NBA dreams that, I, that obviously fell short and I was devastated. I was like, it's, it's almost as if up to that point, it never dawned on me that I, like, I couldn't possibly not make it. Like that wasn't even really an option or a thought. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And you all know that we, we like to get very, very interesting individuals on the platform because the focus overall is to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And we like to focus on stories, strategies and successes. So understanding that, I want to encourage you, if you have not taken the time to subscribe wherever you're listening, I would encourage you to subscribe on YouTube because you can get access to exclusive content. So subscribe there first. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and dive in because we got a very special guest in the building. And I'm going to go ahead and get ready to bring our guest out. But I want to introduce him proper. You know, I'm, I'm from the South. So we're, so we're going to go ahead and introduce this gentleman. He's he's a professional develop. He's a personal development coach. OK, he's a personal development coach. And he's also the author of his forthcoming book, Transition Game, How Basketball Culture Has Failed the 99 percent. God, that's a scary statistic. In addition to that, we, we also have to add the sauce. We got to add the sauce. My, my, my man is a speaker and I've seen him flow. I've definitely seen him flow. I've seen him go. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring out Mr. Kende Aragbaye. What's going on, brother? How you doing? I'm doing well, Jonathan, bro. It's a pleasure to be on. Thank you for having me. Definitely. De did I get, I got, I got the pronunciation right, didn't I? It's as good as it's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> it's as good as it's going to get. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Appreciate man. You. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Kenda, go ahead, man, and just 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 take a second and go ahead. Just let the people know a little bit about yourself, because I know I know I didn't cover everything that you do, and then we'll we'll go ahead and dive in from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, again, my name is Kenda Aragbae. For those um, wondering, uh, I have a Nigerian background. Yoruba is uh, my tribe, um, first generation here. So, I am a now a personal development coach um, for basketball players. I have a, a background in basketball. I played for seventeen years from like age eight all the way to 25. I think that's 17 years. Um, <clears throat> played at the Division One level at Northeastern University and then made my way uh, and finished up at a D2 um, American International College. And uh, I was just, throughout my journey, just really inspired um, and, and taken aback by the statistic that 99% of college basketball players don't make it to the NBA because that was a, a huge goal of mine. And then it really hit me when I, when I graduated and kind of was like in this this weird limbo phase of like, what do I do next? And so I kind of like, um, I sort of channeled that internally. And then from there was inspired to like help out and give back. And so that's kind of where I am now if we fast forward, so. Certainly, certainly. So just break down for us, please, if you could, j just a little bit about, about the tribe. Right. Just 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 about um, just about Nigerian tribes a little bit, if you don't mind, because yeah. you know everybody out there listening, they, they, they might they might not be, be be up to par and they might not know about, you know, Ebo and Europe. Yeah. Just go, please go, go ahead. Just, just just take a little time there. Take a little time. Yep. Educate no us. problem. <laughs> no problem. So Nigeria is a, a really interesting place. Um, it is a it is a country that was put together to be made one, but the reality is it's it's really made up of like over two to 300 ethnic groups, different ethnic groups. And when I say different ethnic groups, I mean culturally different, um, languages different, all of that good stuff. So um, there's, there's probably three main tribes that you've heard of, probably two, and that's Yoruba and Igbo. Those are the more the more popular tribes because we just like between those two tribes we do make a lot of noise internationally. So shout out to my Ebos. But there's a lot there's a lot more ethnic groups. Um, but of course, with the um, colonization of of the Brits, they went around and made all of these different ethnic groups into one country, um, which is what we have today. But in reality, all of these ethnic groups were once upon a time their own kingdom. So. Um, that's a quick little synopsis. 
Gotcha. 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 Okay. Okay. And then you said you, you hoop, hoop for 17 years. So after you finished up and, 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 and well, what, 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 let's, let's not, let's, let's not go that far. Let's not go that far. Let's, let's rewind it. Let, let, yeah. Let's, let's rewind it. So you said going to the league is something that, that you wanted to do, right? When, when, what, what was your first introduction to the game of basketball? <clears throat> I was, uh, I grew up so, Nigerian, so in our culture, soccer is the number one sport. So I grew up playing soccer from like age three to like seven. And then I turned eight, and then uh, one of my neighbors, he kind of just put me on a basketball. He had this court in front of his, like in his front yard or in his driveway. And I used to just be over there playing. And then like one day we just started like kind of playing. And I kind of had this, I had a natural feel for the game. Um, I was really athletic. I had quick feet, stuff like that. So I kind of was just, I just had a natural, inclination to the game and then from age eight <clears throat> once I touched the basketball it was like it was over it was over I was hooked and my dad was disappointed because uh, he had us playing soccer before that but um I picked up the basketball at age eight man and uh I fell in love with the game bro I fell in love with the game I had a big brother uh four years my senior and he also played and so him and I were just I mean we just did every we worked out together he was kind of my like m- mentor and trainer in a lot of ways and we just grinded it out, man, from there, from that point on. I love it. I love it. So with you being a part of the Nigerian culture, typically aren't the parents looking for you to be something like a, a, a doctor, a, 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 a attorney, a, a teacher, a physician, or, or some, yeah. somewhere in, in, in that field? So how, 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 did, how did your parents feel about this decision? And, you know, like like even now, what, what, do, what do they feel about what you do now? Yeah. So um, that's a great question, and it's true for sure. I, I would say for my parents, the main thing was as long as your grades is up, it's all it's all to the good, right? And like my, I know my dad and in our household, if you brought, you couldn't bring home a C, no Cs. So as long as you got A's and B's, it was it was all good. Which I kept my grades up, so I didn't really have that problem. And then also too, when they realized like kind of how good I was, I kind of got more support than like kind of in the beginning. So um, their support, their their support came gradually as they realized, like, okay, their son has some some talent. Mm, okay, okay. So basically, what so what you're saying is, you start showing them the receipts, you start showing them the work you was putting. In. <laughs> Listen, hold on to your receipts. <laughs> oh uh, man. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So talk about the transition from, from college and then what, what, what like what happened after college? Because I know like j- just with the work that you do with, with speaking um, and then also being, being a personal development coach, like, like talk about your own personal transition and, yeah. and, and what, what that looked like for you. Cause I know that's yeah. a, typically a difficult area. 100%. Um, so I, the way I look at it is, is this way. Like I, I always, I was always a good student. Always got good grades, always had a good head on my shoulders, always had abilities outside of just playing ball. And even somebody like me fell victim. And that's kind of really what hit me because I'm like, man, I graduated college and here I was, you know, I had these NBA dreams that I, that obviously fell short and I was devastated. I was like, it's, it's almost as if up to that point, it never dawned on me that I like I couldn't possibly not make it like that wasn't even really an option or a thought. So like I put all of the, I put all of this effort into making it to the league, and then I kind of turned like twenty four ish, and I realized like okay, it might not it might not happen, and when that settled in my spirit, it was like whoa like what now, right? And mind you, again like I was a good student, you know what I mean? I always had like other sort of talents, but I never tapped into them, nor did I want to because basketball was the only thing I can envision myself doing. So it was a really rough period, man. I, I'm not going to lie to you. It was some, it was some mild depression. I don't want to say full blown depression because there's people out there who are really going through it, but I definitely had a, at least a mild depression for sure. And I was confused. Um, my self-esteem took a major hit and I, I was just kind of in limbo for like at least a couple of years, bro. And, um, you know, I prayed a lot during that time, just trying to f- like figure out like what now, like what's, what do I do now? Like, what can I possibly do that would mirror the love I had for basketball? Right. And like, how do I see myself even beyond that? Like, how do I see myself? How do I exist in this world? Not as a basketball player, because up to that point, 
everything I did was from the prism and the lens of of a ball player. Like from from the from the girls I dated to the relationships I had with like people and friends and like just everything was from the from the, from the lens of being a ball player. So now how do I exist in this world? How do I have value in this world as just a regular civilian? So it's it's a really weird place if you're not again if you don't have a transition game or if you don't have a some sort of a strategy in place, which is what I do now because it's not really talked about and and most kids don't even can't even foresee this because it's not really something that's being discussed. So you don't really know it's going to happen until it happens. And then you're like, okay, what now? So my whole thing is um, prevention is the best medicine, right? And I want to say that again, like prevention is the best medicine. It's like, you don't really know. You don't even, if you prevent things, you don't even know what's to come because you avoided it altogether. And that's what I would like to see. I, I don't want players to go through that weird phase where they're depressed and confused and trying to figure it out at the end because when you do that it's too late wow prevention can, can can you can you break that down a little bit more take just just take take a little more time with that yeah can they please you know, take, take yeah yeah i uh i worked uh i worked in the medical industry for for quite some time um doing like medical sales and um being in the industry you you, you get you get to see a lot of like how the, how, the, how health insurance really works, like on a, on a real level. And um, I came across all sorts of crazy situations. And one of the things that we will constantly say is that, you know, avoidance, that's, that's the best way. Like if to avoid a major bill or a major health crisis, get those annual checkups, right? Like, like go get those annual checkups to, to see where, where your health status is before it's too late. And now it's a major issue. So the whole game to prevent high spending in the medical industry is prevention, 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 preventive care. And that, that stuck with me. Like, I'm like, dang, like that's real talk. Like a lot of the, like half of the problems we see just in life could be avoided if you did the work early. When you do the work, to, like when you're responding, when you're in the defense, you're, it's, you're scrambling, it's too late. But if you can just kind of like invest early on into prevention, preventive care and preventive measures, you avoid a lot of the stuff on the back end. So it's that stuff that resonated with me strongly. And um, I say it all the time, man, like prevention is the best medicine. Man, that's good, Ken Day. That's good, man. That's a bar. That's a that's bar. A bar. Sure. It's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like I, if I don't have no tattoos, but that'd be like one of the things I would get tatted like, cause it's, it's real, bro. Like do the work early. Trust me, like it, it, it's not fun. And you don't, really, you, don't, you don't really realize it pays dividends, but believe me, <laughs> like, do it now and later you won't have to worry about it man yeah yeah so talk a little bit about your work with you know what 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 you do as as a as a personal development coach just just go go in there um because i'm i'm interested just to hear like your your process behind the work that you do because yeah. i know that everybody has their own philosophy or everybody has their own strategy yeah and and even but it seems like even till the day at some high schools and some colleges still haven't figured it out. So, yeah. so <laughs> help us, help us all, help us. Yep. They, they really, they truly haven't. And it's, uh, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's weird to see and that in 2021 with everything going on with the NCAA and NIL and just, just the conversations being had that we just still haven't figured it, figured out how to truly service athletes in a, in a, in an equitable way. Um, so for me, my, my perspective is like, okay, it's been decades of, of trying to convince them basketball culture, right? Whether that's parents, coaches, the NCAA, universities, whoever, right? Throw them all in. It's been decades of trying to convince them, okay, hey, we're getting it wrong. How do we do it right? And I'm to a point now where it's like, maybe they're never going to get it right. Maybe they're not interested in getting it right. Maybe it's not profitable enough to get it right. So. I'm trying to empower the players directly. Like, listen, they're not going to come save, save us. They're not going to come save you, right? They're not, they don't care that basketball culture has failed to 99%, right? That's not, they're not making it their business. So how do we as players, as athletes, understand the game being played and then figure out how to navigate it? That's just the bottom line. 
right? And so for me, it's really about empowering players, educating players, and then helping them understand that you can take better advantage of the current of 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 the opportunity in front of you, right? From and then and then on top of that, even even bigger than that is, and this is not to be a dream killer because I, I believe in the in, in like the importance of having a dream, and those who do make it to the NBA are are blessed beyond measure, right? So it's not it's not to say that you can't make it, but the stats are the stats, right? And the stats are that 99% of you, and that's at the college level. We're not even talking getting to college, which is difficult in itself. In college, only 1% will make it to the NBA. So with that stat being a reality, how do we put measures in place to ensure that even if you fall short, you can lead a a highly successful life, not just a successful life, but a highly successful life, leveraging free education, leveraging the game of basketball, relationships, right? And, And doing it in a holistic way. From financial literacy, that's obviously important, to identity, coping with that, to other interests, right? And just like really holistically preparing yourself for life after sports so that you're able to like pivot when it's time, seamlessly pivot. This is a made, this is an epidemic in a lot of ways, based on my experience talking to athletes. And it's uh it's just, it's just not we're missing the bar entirely. And so for me, there's a huge opportunity for anybody who's in a career development space, personal development space, who genuinely cares about athletes, there's a there's a major opportunity here for us to show how important this is and to, and to, and to pour back into these kids. Cause I mean, it's year after year, it's thousands upon thousands entering college, playing AAU, playing high school ball. Like this is a extremely popular sport, basketball, and it's primarily dominated by African-Americans. So for me, it's, it's not only a, a giving back to the sport, it's giving back to my community, which is um, I, I highly believe in. So I feel strongly about this. It's only one percent. <laughs> it's only one percent. One percent. I didn't know. Okay, so I I, I was talking to uh, my 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 good friend, my brother. We we played together. His name is Buzo. He's he's Nigerian, and he's, he's Igbo. And 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 I was telling him, I was like, I never really looked at it and really thought about how blessed I even am to able to be able to say that I played college basketball. Like, because pe- people come up to me because I, I was a guy who did, I didn't play that much. Kende, mm-hmm. I didn't play that much. But people come up, they're like, oh, man, you played junior college? Oh, man, wow. And then I was like, I told him, you know, I made it to the university. Oh, yeah. wow, you played you play, you play basketball at the next level? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, you know. But when you throw out this stat, 1%? I'm telling you, it's mind-boggling. Oh, it's, a head, it's literally a head-scratcher. It really is, because you so, know so many. Yeah, you, you. I mean, you, I mean, you know, like you can just probably just you could probably name hundreds of guys you don't play with or or that you played the, who are whatever overseas or what. But if you think about the ones that make it to the NBA, it's probably what you might know one. Like it's not the numbers mm. is yeah the numbers is the numbers, bro. Like it's crazy, it's crazy. <laughs> That's wild because I know some cold dudes too, and the majority of them ended up overseas. Because I mean, because yeah. guys even get guys get drafted, right, and then sign, yep, and then still go overseas. Mm-hmm. Like mm. it's one percent that make it to the NBA. The percent of the percentage of the guys who play an actual NBA game, or the percentage of the guys who Ooh. make it to their first contract, Ooh. or like it's it gets it just. It's, but we're talking, we're literally talking, and I'm not saying this again, this is not to be a dream killer. We're talking about something that's damn near impossible. Mm. And that's, again, bro, like I, I know a couple of guys in the NBA, like it's, it's possible and you should, you should work hard to, to achieve that because what comes with that is you, you can't find anywhere else, right? So it's not to say, don't go after your dreams. It's to say, in the event you don't make it, can you pivot? Mm. That's the question. And I, I see far too many guys who fall short and they're broken because of that. We should that should never be the case. You should not be broken because your NBA dreams 
don't materialize. That should not. If we if that's the case, we've done this whole thing wrong. All of it. Man, man. Oh, man. Yeah. So, so Ken Day, I was looking at some of your content, man. I saw you break down a Y acronym. Mm. Please, please share that with the people. Cause I, I, I think that's going to bless somebody today. Talk, talk to it. And I think this is perfect. Yeah. Like how this, so please go, go, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Give, give, go ahead. Give, give us the why. Give us. The- so, so the acronym for why is, is what hurts you. And uh, in other words, what issue is there in the world that it's your job to help resolve? And I'm, that's, it's a powerful thing to me because <clears throat> as an entrepreneur, right? And it could be whatever you do in life. Like you could be in law school, you could be trying to be a doctor, you can be playing basketball. It doesn't matter what you do. You're going to be, you're going to be, if you're doing, if anything worth doing will come with this fair share of challenges. That's just life, right? And we all, we all hit those, hit that resistance where it's like, dang, like, this is hard. Or maybe I, I, maybe I feel like quitting one day, right? And for me, the only way you can get through those moments is if you remember your why. And everyone's why is different, right? So for me, the journey I'm going through, writing this book, right? Building my brand, trying to impact lives, right? Like there's so many different uh, challenges that come with that. And I just, every day I got to remind myself, why am I doing it? It's to impact lives. Why am I doing it? It's to change the lives of African-American men. Why am I doing it? It's to ensure that young men are able to pivot in the event they don't make it to the end. Those are my whys. So when I think about that from an impact perspective, it's like, okay, keep going. Because even if it's, it doesn't matter how many lives I touch, just one is enough. Like that's worth it. You know, because I know how I know what I went through personally. So if I can help someone avoid that, that is like it's worth it. That's rewarding enough. We're not even talking about monetizing it. We're just talking about impacting like that's enough for me. So remembering your why is important. And that's across the board, whatever you're doing in life. Solid, man. Solid, solid, solid. So writing a book. When, when did this idea come to fruition? And then for you to say, because writing a book is not a, it's not an easy thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not, it's not an easy thing. The, the process is simple, but it's not necessarily easy as right. well. So when did you decide, okay, it's time for me to put this and these thoughts mm-hmm. on paper? Yeah. I got to give God all the glory on that one because I'm a, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, this is a true story. I was, uh, this is August, 2019, pre-pandemic. I was in Australia, enjoying myself on a vacation. And uh, I was uh, in an Uber, I was with, with a friend. We're in the back of, uh, back of the Uber um, and Sydney, Australia, it was. And um, the Uber driver, it was one of those things where like, you didn't really feel like talking that day, like to your driver, but he just was like super talkative, asking us a lot of questions about America and this and that and what did I do and all this stuff and we got to talking about basketball somehow and he was asking me like did I play in the NBA and I'm like no I didn't play in the NBA oh well what do you do now and this is what I do now how was that transition and we just got to talking and it just hit me literally it hit me and I know 100% it was the it was the it was the Holy Spirit that just ascended on me in that moment and I, I said these words I was like you know what I'm gonna write a book just like that and my friend and the driver just started laughing. And I'm like, my mind's already like, okay, when I get back home, I'm doing it. Like I'm already like in plan planning mode. And they're while while they're laughing, because I just kind of said it out of nowhere. And um I got home that day from my uh to my Airbnb and I called my wife, my wife now, my girlfriend at the time, and I was like, yo, when I get back, I'm writing a book. She was like, okay. I'm like, all right, wait till I get back. <laughs> And um, I got back and I started writing. And um, to be honest with you, bro, like the, the whole entire process, like from the idea to the research that, that's been conducted to, to write the book, to the ideas, like, I, like when I tell you 70% of the information that's in this book, I, I got in like revelations in my dreams. Like I would literally get dreams, have dreams where like, it'd be like, all right, this topic. And then like, I'll have to like get up three in the morning. Like, all right, let me, let me 
level set for a second. I started having these revelations about topics in the book and I would have them in my dreams and I wake up the next morning and I forget it would completely escape me what I had dreamed about. This happened like two or three times. And I'm like, dang, this is like, dang, I'm pissed off. Cause I'm like, whatever. I remember getting like some crazy bars in my dreams, but then I wasn't remembering them. So it was pissing me off. So then I'm like, all right, I think God's trying to like really show me something. So the next morning I was like, all right, if you have a dream, immediately wake up, pull your phone out and put the notes in your phone before you forget. So then I, I started doing that. And that was like my system. At least two to three days a week, I'd have these dreams and I'd have to put the notes in my phone. But when I woke up the next morning, I, I looked at the notes again. These notes would be book ideas, either chapters or ideas or research topics, stuff like that. So that's been 50% of the process. So that's how I know it was a calling from God himself. He put that, like, this is an assignment he's put on me. And so it's uh, the fact that I'm kind of nearing the end and we're almost like in that publishing phase. Um, I'm excited about it, man. Not only for me and the impact I'm going to have on lives, um, but just the fact that it was an assignment given to me that that I'm bringing to completion. And I, I'm proud of that as well. That's pretty, that's pretty dope, man. That's, that's pretty dope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, deep. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know the, <clears throat> I don't know the percentage of authors out there, but I do know that it said, I believe 80% 80, 80 of people want to write a book. The percent that actually do write the book, I don't know that percentage. My dad would know that percentage. I don't know that percentage. But I know I know it's a lot less than 80. So yeah. you even being at this point, you know, and you're 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 coming down like the the home stretch. I just I mean, I, I want to tell you congratulations in advance. And uh, especially being in this space, uh, doing the work that you do, working with these young student athletes, you know, the high school and the college athletes. Uh, I, I think it's going to be big. I, I think yeah. it's really it's, it's, it's really going to be big and knowing that they need to see more individuals that look like them. Mm. And not even just individuals that look like them, but cool individuals that look like them. Kinda, you look, yeah. you look like a cool brother. I mean, you you, yeah. you, know, you got you got your cool logo <laughs> on, on, on your on your apparel <laughs> and everything like that. I mean, it, it 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 helps us to it helps us to unlearn what what we thought success looked like because at one point, excuse excuse my brief TED talk, but at one point, you know, success for us. And correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know. But at one point. Success was what we thought rappers had when they were when they were renting out chains and renting out houses and renting out cars. And then you're like, wait, but you you didn't. Own, and then we later learned that they didn't own a lot of the stuff mm -hmm. that they were and they were using borrowed money. Yep. But now we're learning that now rappers are showing us mm -hmm. some that success looks like wealth and it looks like impact and, yeah. and it looks like, like the work, the work that you're doing. So yeah. I just, I just want to just commend you on, on the work that you're doing and, and, and just let me know when, when the time comes and, and, and I know where to, where to buy my book. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Support, man. Thank you so much. De definitely. Definitely. But I'm, I'm we're going to get ready to wrap it. I'm probably, I'm probably going to bring you back. And I'm probably bring you back. Anytime. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I might need to come out, and come see you out there in Cali, man. Pull up. <laughs> so, hey, hey. I'll, I'll bring my wife. You know, we'll, we'll. Yeah, hey, double hey. date. <laughs> man, she, hey, she, she loved to travel too. So, hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but hold on, wait. But before, before we hop into the two minute drill, I want you just to let people know uh, how they can follow you, how they can connect with you. Well, let, let them know how they can follow you, and then mm -hmm. after two minute drill, then we'll go in a little bit. Deeper. Okay. So Instagram is primarily where I'm at. Um, you can follow me there at transition G. I'm also on Twitter at transition underscore G and my website will be up and running, uh, sometime in the next couple of days. And that's going to be at transition, dash G.com. Dope, dope, dope. So now I got to go ahead and run you through the two minute drill because you know, everybody goes through the two minute drill. This is beyond the ball. So you got to go through the two minute drill. We in the four lines. All right. And, uh, for those of you all listening, uh, this might be your first time. And just understand that the two minute drill is an opportunity where I just ask a few rapid fire questions, a handful, uh, just to, just to have a little bit of fun. So, Ken Day, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get it. All right. Here we go. Favorite food. 
fufu. Mm, I, 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 I thought so. <laughs> I didn't want to. I thought. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what's what's the last book you read? Ooh, last book I read. Ooh, forty million dollar slaves. Mm, man. What's your Netflix yeah. go to show? Uh, what's your streaming show of preference? Streaming like platform or show? Well, show, show. Ooh, right now. Ooh, when it was on, it was um. What's the show? Dang, what's the show? I'm stuck right now. All right, I use this one. I like uh, the hundred. That's a good show. Uh, the hundred. I heard somebody else say that. I might need yeah, check the hundred. Might need check that out. What, what, what's your What's your favorite podcast? Favorite podcast? Brian Joe Rogan. Mm, he has he has interesting conversations. It's interesting, yeah. He has yeah. really interesting. You don't want to like him, but he has interesting conversations. The topics are interesting. <laughs> he's he, he's great at what he does. Yeah. What what's what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Take your time. Ooh, one tip. If I had one, I would say start early, and by that I mean the transition, like like thinking about what your life looks like after basketball is over, thinking about your other interests, thinking about other areas that you're good at, all of those sort of ancillary thoughts as you're going through your, your basketball or athletic journey, you can never start early enough, like middle school, high school, like start now and take those incremental steps so that in the end, it doesn't feel like such a burden and such a task. So I would say start early, that's the most important part. Boom. And then who's one guest that you would like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Anybody? I mean, who's the, I mean, you you t I asked to hear who you say. And then, you know, then I, I'll, I'll go out and, and look. I mean, I don't have a magic wand, but I can reach out. <laughs> OK, I would say. Um, I would say. My twin sister. OK. Nancy Aragbae. <laughs> Okay. She's a beast. She's a beast. I don't doubt it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, yeah. th there it is. You successfully made it through the two minute drill. Now go ahead and let people know once again where they can connect with you. And then also, you know, how they can see about booking you, speaking, and all that other good stuff. Take it. Yep. Up. Thank you so much. Um, Instagram, transition G, Twitter, transition underscore G. The website will be up and running uh, shortly. And that's going to be transition-g.com. Um, and you can book me um, for all engagements, um, curriculums, any of that stuff at kende at transitiong.com. Kende, that's K-E-H-I-N-D-E at transitiong.com. Thank you so much. My man, my man. Thank you. I appreciate you stopping by and really adding value to the ballers. I really, I, I enjoyed that conversation. Thoroughly. Thoroughly. I, I enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, most definitely. We're going to bring you back, man. We're going to bring Let's you back. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, brother. All right. To all the ballers out there, all the ballers out there listening, once again, I would encourage you all to subscribe wherever you stream your podcast. But I would encourage you to make sure to, 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 to screenshot the episode and then just, just shoot it over and D, DM uh, Ken Day and let him know like what part really benefited you, what part really served you well. Uh, and then if you have questions, connect with them, reach out because uh, he, he put he puts great content uh, on it on his pages. And I was watching some of it earlier and I was like, oh, I like the way he actually rolls out his content. It's, it's pretty it's pretty engaging. So so be, be sure to connect with him. Uh, j just like you said on Instagram, it's at transition G and everybody else out there. Uh, if I can be of support or be a resource to you anyway, please DM me and let me know at Jonathan Jones speaks. But to everybody out there, thanks again. All the ballers rocking. You all know. Uh, this is Beyond the Ball, and I'm Jonathan Jones, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.